Coding Made Easy. So what's up everybody, this is Peter aka Coding Made Easy coming to you with your third loops tutorial, 3 of 6. No, I'm joking. This is the last loops tutorial. So there's three types of loops in C sharp. Um, so this tutorial we're going to be learning about the do while loops and if you know how to do while loops you know how to do, do while loops so it's easy uh, to catch on now um, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing a mini uh, calculator program and then as future tutorials go on like we might leave it uh, in certain tutorials to learn certain concepts but I'll always try to bring back up this calculator concept or something similar or whatever because Basically, I've noticed a lot of people like they try to uh, learn things quote unquote the right way, but there's no right way to do things in programming. There's efficient ways, uh, more effective ways in terms of speed, more effective ways in, in, in terms of usability, blah, 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 effective ways in terms of code design and code structure. There's many things that go into um, code. And so there's no such thing as perfect code. So I want to show you, show you different ways to do the exact same thing. And then as we get better, we'll see uh, more effective ways to do the same thing or different approaches to get the same goal. Uh, so that's why we're going to be using the sort of the same calculator concept throughout this tutorial series. And we'll change it up every now and then. So don't worry about it. So anyways, the syntax for do while loop is as follows. Do and then after you put while at the end and you end it with a semicolon so with the other loops as you would have noticed uh, when we do like while or anything we don't end it with a semicolon but with a do while loop after the while loop we have to put a semicolon at the end so what is a do while loop exactly it is exactly like a while loop but it guarantees at least one iteration so say for example I did something like that the bool is running you know what let's see yeah no bool is running equals uh, false and I said while is running is equal to true whatever's inside here wouldn't be executed right it wouldn't be executed because is running is false but with the do while loop if we change this around to a do while loop and we did do while is running is equal to true then it, here it would execute it then it would evaluate so the difference between a, a while loop and a do while loop is a while loop evaluates the condition first before it executes a do while loop checks the condition after it executes so it's always guaranteed at least one iteration and so a do while loop is not the most popular loop but I can guarantee you that you will find uses for it. Can you get by without a do-while loop? Sure, you can. Uh, but um, I use it every now and then. So it's the least popular, but it still has its uses. Uh, so what we're going to do right now is um, we're going to have an int number. I'm going to put a number one and we're going to do number two. Now, I don't think I showed you guys this, but you can specify multiple uh, variable names with the same data type, which is int on the same line and you can even assign them on the same line like so the reason why you haven't seen me do it thus far is that I don't really think it's good for code readability because if you have two things like this and you have um, uh, a test bar like that and blah 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 it affects code readability because usually when you read code you'll read it from straight down like that and there's been many instances when I never realized that I set a variable like this uh, this way and so I miss it because I'm looking down so fast on my code so instead of mixing it up like having certain variables set like this and certain variables set linear it's uh, it's for, for more readable code in my opinion it's better to do it all on a single line even though it takes a more readable space um, but that is my opinion I think others will agree with me but it's up to you uh, which code style you want to use there's no right or wrong way so anyways, uh, we'll set exit and we'll set exit equal to false. So we have an int, a number, and we'll exit. And so we're going to do console.write and we're going to say please enter number, uh, enter the first number. And so we're going to say number one is equal to convert to an 
32 and console rewind. And um, I'm not really a fan of really copying and pasting things because you can normally make errors, but to make this tutorial a bit shorter for you guys. So enter the second number and do number two. And the reason why I don't like copying is and pasting because what if I forgot to change the number two? Or I forgot to change the text and for a small piece of code it's not really that error prone. Like but like for large pieces of code I don't really like copying and pasting, but um that is again uh user preference that's just my preference. So uh, what we're gonna do is we're going to add these numbers together. Now I'm gonna show you something really cool, but I don't. If you guys don't get it right away, don't worry, because we will be bringing up this topic later on when we learn about different strings. Um, but we can use uh, this string formatter uh, to um, enter strings. Okay, this is how we would have to do it. If we wanted to put number one, uh, display the number and display number two is equal to whatever, we'd have to do something like this. So we'd say um, number one, from what we know right now, we'd say number one plus, and then we'd have to put a plus sign, plus number two plus, oh, sorry, we'd have to put a plus sign there, is equal to plus number one Plus number two now would give us the result and so let us comment this out and we'd enter three plus five and I'll say three plus five to go to 35 but this kind of looks really ugly and so we can use the code formatter now again if you don't understand it don't worry um, so what I'm going to do is in quotes I'm going to put zero plus one equals and then here I'm going to put number one, number two, number one plus number two. Uh, so in C, uh, whenever we see things with indexes, uh, they start with zero in C sharp. We'll learn more about this in arrays. Uh, but when we put the curly braces and we put the, we, we start with zero. So we put zero and, and after we're done our string, we put a comma. And after that, uh, we can put the different elements we want to be replaced by these brackets. So the first number, anywhere we see the curly brace is zero, that's where we want to put number one. So if I, even if I put it here, I put it as many times as I want. But when it, when it comes time to actually display the string, whatever is in column zero is going to be replaced by this value. Whatever is in the second one is going to be replaced by value number one. Whatever is in the third one is going to be replaced by value two. So I get the same result when I do this. See, so the numbers got replaced. If you don't understand it, don't worry. It's just a cool little feature. Uh, I'll explain it more in depth when we learn about uh, more about strings. So anyways, um, we have that displayed. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, um, um, uh, would you like to Calculate again, and we can say y or n, and so we're going to get the answer. And so let's say string answer or say input and console dot reline, and so we're just going to say if input is equal to y. Uh, where they like to calculate again, then we just do continue and we'll do else if input is equal to n and then we will put that exit is equal to true and then we'll loop while exit is equal to false. So um, now for some of you who are coming from other languages, you might see that there's better ways to do this or um, or even if you're new to a programming language, you can probably see there's better ways or, or simpler ways to, to shrink code. Um, so if you can think of a better way to do it, do it, practice it. Uh, but when we run this program, we're gonna say five plus six, would you like to calculate again? Yes, I would. And then I can enter another number again. 
we're going to calculate again n for no and then we exit the program so it at least guarantees us one to, to calculate at least once and then we can decide if we want to go again and so that's a that's a real benefit of a do while is that even if the condition is false right away so even if this was exit was set to true and it would have exited right away it at least guarantees that it will execute once so if it's vital then um, a do while loop may suit you in that situation so anyways that's it for this tutorial i hope you enjoyed it don't forget to comment rate, and subscribe and bye for now